Hi everyone, my name is Ning Yi and you can call me Imi. In today's video, I will talk about how I got into MIT. First thing first, let me address a disclaimer. All the information I give in this video is solely based on my personal experience and speaking from my own perspective. Because there's no one way to get into college, please take my words as a reference instead of a goal that you need to imitate. With that being understood, let's jump right into the application. Here's the timestamp of this video. There are two ways to apply to MIT. One is the MIT application that is different from the common app as you may know. And the other way is through QuestBridge. QuestBridge is a non-profit program that helps low-income but high-achieving students to get higher education in the leading institutions. I applied to MIT through QuestBridge as a QuestBridge finalist. If you guys are interested in the application through QuestBridge, let me know in the comments and I will explain it in a more detailed video. Both the MIT application and the QuestBridge application are similar to each other but differ a little bit in the essay structure. But basically, they achieve the same goal. Moving on to stats. In high school, my unweighted GPA was 4.0 and my weighted GPA was 4.4. I only took 5 AP classes. In junior year, I took 3 AP classes. They are AP stats, which I got a 5. AP calculus BC, I got a 5. And AP English language, which I successfully got the smallest prime number. <laughs> yeah. I didn't take the AP Chinese class, but I took the exam and I got a 5. And in my senior year, I took AP Bio, AP Computer Science A, and we don't know the score yet. Because our high school doesn't offer as much AP classes, but I want to fulfill my desire of learning, therefore I want to take some advanced classes in my local community college. So I took two physics classes that are equivalent to AP Physics C Mechanics and AP Physics C Electronics and Magnetism, and this semester I took linear algebra. The reason that I want to point this out is because AP classes are a way to express your understanding of certain advanced subjects. Even if you are not presented with the opportunity to take them, you can still show that in other forms such as taking classes in local community colleges and doing some research projects and you name it. And for SAT, I didn't get a score that is as excellent as my other MIT admits did. I only got a score that is on the lower range of 1400s, which is not even the 25th percentile of the score listed on the MIT's website. But I think this shows that grades are everything and what values the most is your essays and extracurriculars and stuff. And in the SAT writing section, I got 6 on reading, 6 on analysis, and 7 on writing. And also since MIT requires two subject tests, one math and one science, I took math 2, which I got 800, and I took physics and I got 740, and I was happy about the score. My SAT grades aren't perfect, but I think that shows you guys how grades are everything, and grades are the most important elements in your application. What values the most is in your essays, your recommendation letters and possibly your portfolio if you have any. And that leads to our next point, extracurriculars. In the MIT application, you can only list up to four extracurriculars, but in the QuestBridge application, you can list up to six extracurriculars. I only listed five, and the first one is Math Club. I actually immigrated from China to the United States when I was in sophomore year. So I joined math club in the first year I come to the United States and I have participated for three years and we go to different high schools and we do math list competitions with the students there and it was fun. And the second extracurricular was photography club. I was the president and the founder of the photography club. The reason I started the club was because I was taking some photography classes in our school I just realized that our school doesn't really have a photography club and I want to spread the knowledge I learned in our class to our high school students. Therefore, I just created a club and teach the camera lessons and organize some field trips 
to encourage others to embrace this interest. If you're thinking about creating a club, I strongly recommend it. Creating this new club not only trained my leadership skills, but also pushed me outside of my comfort zone and gave me an experience to engage with others. And the third extracurricular I have on my list is Girls Who Code. It's a summer program where we learn different coding languages such as Python, JavaScript, CSS, etc. In the end of the program, we develop a project and then we present it to the public. My team members and I created a game and a website to bring awareness to teenage girls' no self-esteem. And the fourth extracurricular I had was tennis team. I played tennis for two years in our school varsity tennis team, and my partner and I won the doubles champion of the Auckland Ethnic League. And the fifth extracurricular I had was bookstore volunteer. There was actually a story behind this. When I came to the United States, my friend introduced me to this local bookstore where you can buy books at a very cheap price, such as 3 or 4 dollars. As a book lover, I went there almost every single week. And because I love the atmosphere there so much, I went there and asked if I could be a volunteer there. So I transitioned myself to a very regular customer to a supportive volunteer. Also, we got discounts for the books as a volunteer. That's why you see there are so many books on my desk. Yeah. Next part, essays. As I said earlier, the Questbridge essay structure is a little bit different than the MIT essays, but I think the values presented through the essays are about the same. In my essays, I talk about how I perceive the world in my own unique perspective and also share my personality through them. If you would like to know what I actually wrote about in my essays, let me know. But the general rule of thumbs here is be yourself and share your values. After essays and extracurriculars, I think the other part that shines your values through is portfolio. For MIT, you can submit four types of portfolios. They are research, music and theater arts, and visual art and architecture, and maker portfolio. I submitted a photography portfolio and a maker portfolio. It's not necessary to submit two portfolios, but since photography and making and building stuff are my passions, I thought it would be nice to show the admissions officers different sides of me and the values I can bring to the table. We all know that if you're applying to colleges, you need about two recommendation letters. There's not too much advice I could give, but I would say just do build a strong relationship with your teachers and choose the teacher that knows you well to write your recommendation letters. After you have completed and submitted the materials, now you have the option to have an interview. For MIT, interview is not required, but, statistic but statistically speaking, MIT admits around 11% of applicants who participated in an interview or had their interview waived, versus only 1% of applicants who did not participate in an interview got in. So if you could, I strongly recommend having an interview. You can practice your conversational skills and also learn a lot from your interviewer about their life at MIT. I talked a lot about my projects with my interviewer and also learned some interesting ideas and fun facts about MIT from him. MIT actually puts a lot of resources online to help applicants like you and students like us to learn more about MIT, including the MIT blog, which is very famous and I enjoy reading the blogs a lot, and the MIT application guide which I will put the links down below in the description box and you can check it out after this video. Best of luck to those of you who are applying to college this year and I know that college application process could be stressful but it is worthwhile to go through this experience. You can comment if you have any questions and I hope you all have your dream come true. I hope this video has helped you in some way and if you're interested in learning more about QuestBridge, which is the program that I got into MIT with, please don't hesitate to subscribe and turn on the notification bell so that next week when I post the video, you can be the first one to watch it. In the meantime, you can watch my MIT decision reaction here and if you're interested in knowing what I've been doing at home during this quarantine, check out my vlog here. And I'll see you guys next time. Stay healthy and safe. Bye. I see you standing there. Let's do the atmosphere. Smell of your after.
you safe. Deep 